Sunset slow, hey you know you should stay for the night Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name's Bex, I'm now a fourth year mature medical student studying at Bristol University in the UK and I've been making videos for about 18 months now about how to get into medicine, how to self-study GCSEs, talking about the access course and trying to give you a bit of a taste of what it's like to study at med medical school as a mature student in the UK. So I've just started fourth year at Bristol. Today is Wednesday. I started on Monday and I'm currently on a psychiatry block for six weeks. So Monday was just an intro day where we had lectures from different people from the university. That was for the whole year group. So yesterday we had our induction, which was face to face. And that was specifically for those starting psychiatry. So there were maybe 25 or 30 students, some that I recognized from previous years, which was really nice. And then in the afternoon we had teaching. So we were learning about things like hallucinations and delusions, mental illnesses, the Mental Health Act, um, the Mental Capacity Act. So they're already day one and there's so much information to learn. So what I've decided to do this afternoon, because I'm not on placement today, is go to Pret. So I'm starting this habit again, similar to last year, getting out of the flat, getting my work done, because at the start of the year, I like to just sit down and first of all, just get into the flow of things. So do a few questions, open Anki, getting everything in one place so that when I start placement officially tomorrow at the hospital, I'm organized and I know exactly what I'm going in for and what assessments I'm gonna try and get done on that particular day. So the way that fourth year is gonna work is I spend six weeks on psychiatry, then I move on to OBS and gynae, then child health, that'll be block one, that'll take us to January. And then from January onwards, I moved to Southmead Hospital. And then I have an 18 week placement on complex medicine in older people, CMOP. Um, and then I have my finals, can you believe it? Finals in June. So written exam in June and OSCEs in July. And that's it for fourth year. Fifth year, we have an elective. And then I'll be based at Gloucester, which is about an hour away from where I live. And that's all about learning how to become a foundation year doctor, getting on the wards and getting stuck in. So I'm really excited about this year. I think it's gonna be, again, another steep learning curve. I think the hardest transition that I've noticed so far is going from second year to third year, so to clinical years. But I hope that by making these videos this year, it'll show you what to expect if you're also starting your clinical years and maybe give you some tips on how to study and how to stay on top of things, how to stay organized and motivated. So if you're new, definitely subscribe to the channel. Um, if you haven't done so, I made a lot of videos last year as well, and that was my first year on placement. So if you're looking to see what that looks like in the UK specifically, and especially if you're going to Bristol, then check out those videos as well. Good morning, everybody. It's Saturday the 24th of September, and I want to apologize because I've been pretty crap at vlogging during this block. I made my first video, um, which is the clip that you saw before, probably about two and a half weeks ago. And I've been planning to vlog pretty much every day. And I just haven't felt like it. I'll be perfectly honest. I haven't felt as creative as perhaps I normally am. And when that happens, I just decide not to vlog because I want new videos to be creative and come from the heart and do so when I feel um, in the right mindset, if that makes sense. So apologies for that. I think it just took me a few weeks to kind of ease myself back into medical school after the summer, which was so exciting. And I just went on loads of adventures. It just felt like a massive contrast going from that back to full-time placement and studying. And I think even now, two or three weeks in, I'm still trying to find my feet again and figure out how to study. So yeah, things have definitely been a lot slower in terms of getting back into the swing of things this year. Today is Saturday. I thought I would just do a little day in the life to show you what I get up to during the academic year to try and stay healthy and balanced whilst also having things to do to prep for next week at medical school. And just a gentle reminder that this channel is not just about trying to motivate you to get into medical school, but 
to motivate you to do whatever makes you happy and fulfilled. You may start off on a path of wanting to become a doctor and later on realizing that you don't and that's absolutely fine. Just do what makes you happy and don't start medical school because you think it's going to um, increase the amount of self-esteem or self-worth that you have because the reality is it doesn't it, it it doesn't it's the inner work that we do on the side that allows us to grow um, and to become more confident and to deal with any traumas and issues that we've had so I think one of the mistakes that I made all those years ago was thinking that once I become a doctor or once I start medical school all of my traumas and issues and negative thoughts would disappear because I would be a doctor <laughs> and it's not the case it doesn't happen like that so I just I don't know I felt guided to say that for some reason currently 9 40 I've got pre-workout and some BCAAs made up first thing I'm gonna do today is walk to the gym so I've joined a new gym which is really exciting and the whole reason for that is to save money I was at Nuffield last year and this year I've joined Pure Gym which is about a 20 minute walk from where I live it's not the same I'll be honest but it's 35 pound a month cheaper so it's a no-brainer and I have to be careful because next year fifth year I don't get any funding whatsoever so I'm not too sure how I'm going to navigate that as of yet, but I'm not going to think about it. We're just going to focus on passing fourth year. It's not too busy. Hopefully I'll be able to show you my workout. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in a second. <laughs>
know that I celebrated my 40th birthday on the 13th of August and my really good friend Simon bought me a new stethoscope and he had it engraved and I wanted to share it with you because I absolutely love it. So it's bubblegum pink and it's a Lippmann stethoscope. So the stethoscope I was using last year was MDF and it was absolutely fine, but this is a game changer really. This is next level up in terms of stethoscopes. You just, you just can't get any better quality than a Lippmann. So this is the stethoscope and then I'm not too sure if you're gonna be able to see um, on camera because I'm filming on my iPhone but it says dream big Bex I'll just try and show it to you I'm not sure if it's going to be blurry yeah I think yeah I don't think you're going to be able to see how it's engraved so it came with a pink pen as well the case which is also pink so I'm going to be using this stethoscope during year four as you know as well probably I'm sitting my finals this year which again is yeah just so surreal um, and after psychiatry I start on obs and gynae and then child health. I do have my MDF stethoscope from last year so what I was going to say is if any of you are struggling financially and you need a stethoscope leave me a comment or email me and I'm happy to donate my previous stethoscope, which I'll show you, hang on. This is my stethoscope, I really love it. This is from last year, so it's rose gold. It's got quite a few marks on, but it works fine, and it allowed me to get through Oscars in year three fine as well. So yeah, if you need a stethoscope, and if you're struggling, and if you're starting medical school, then leave me a comment, and then um, I'm happy to send this out to you. They are normally, I think, around 70 or 80 pounds. They're really expensive. And I know that it was a big investment for me when I started. So yeah, let me know. And I'm happy to give you guys a helping hand if you need it. So I just finished my um, Anki flashcards. And I always think it's surprising that after three or four months of not doing the flashcards, how much information you forget. So I'm happy that I got through those. I also did my CBL for Wednesday. So I had to answer a question um, about primary, secondary and tertiary prevention of mental illness. So uh, that's done. And then I also updated my uh, patient log, which is what I have to present at my endpoint review to my consultant psychiatrist, basically, to show that I've been interacting on this placement, explaining what I've been doing um, and a breakdown of each patient interaction. So what was my role in the interaction? What was their diagnosis, management, which ward they were on? What date did I see them? So I have to get 20 in total and I'm up to 12 now and I'm halfway through the placement. So um, I only need to get eight more. So that'll be absolutely fine. Next week, I'm due to start in a, in a hospital um, in Bristol, which is specifically a hospital to help those suffering with mental illnesses. Sadly, my car is in the garage and is pretty much dead. <laughs> so I have two options really. One, I can go to the BRI and just stay on the later life liaison psychiatry team for a few days until I sort a new car out. Um, or I can stay home and self-study and email them to explain the situation. But I was really looking forward to starting this this placement at the new hospital but yeah my car is not in a good place so I've decided to um, to buy a new one which I'm excited about and I have found one so I need to sort that out tomorrow and then it'll be it'll be weird because I've had this other car for about three and a half four years and I paid 700 pounds for it and it's lasted me all this time and it's done I think about 135,000 miles but it's just on its last legs and I don't want to have to be paying another 1500 or 2000 pounds again this year like I did last year just to fix it so I think it's just about biting the bullet isn't it and and buying a new one which will hopefully last until well, the end of medical school, but also the end of my foundation years as well. So right now it is um, half one. So I'm gonna make some food. And then after lunch, I'm gonna be going back onto the question banks that I was using last year. So Quesmed, Pass Test, Pass Med, 
um, and geeky quiz and I just want to have a kind of a look through and I wanted to show you as well one last thing in terms of resources I was using the zero to finals books and I had two I had the surgery and the medicine book um, I had both of these and I have to say I don't think I would have passed the exams if it wasn't for these books so if you're starting medical school or if you're starting your clinical years I'd highly recommend these and this year because starting on obs and gynae and peds I decided to invest in these books as well now I know that you have the information online but I I don't know I guess it comes back down to what I didn't have in childhood <laughs> and I know it always comes back down to that but I get really excited when I get a book and I can kind of write in it and highlight in it because if you have a look in my medicine book from last year it was just nice to be able to write my own notes and yeah I don't know I just enjoy having the books rather than um, looking for the information online so like I said I've got three weeks left on psychiatry and I don't know psychiatry just feels really natural to me because it's talking to people and thinking about the medication and thinking about okay what do we need to amend but I don't know it I mean it it feels very I don't know just very natural the next block, like I said, is obs and gynae. And I feel like it's going to be such a steep learning curve because I know nothing about obstetrics or gynecology, as in like absolutely nothing. And I've been looking at the lectures online on Blackboard and also having a read of this book. And there's going to be so much to learn. So what I've decided to do starting today is start just looking at some of the lectures online so I get a head start because we've only got six weeks on obs and gynae and there is so much to cover I mean this whole book pretty much is what we need to know for our exams I know it's impossible to learn everything in medicine but I'm starting off from scratch so I think I'm just going to try and get a head start watch some of the lectures and then get an understanding of what we need to know in terms of the medication. So I remember during my end of year exam in year three, I kept, because we do have questions on obs and gynae, even in year three, but we're not obviously expected to know the answers because we haven't covered it. That's why the pass mark in year three is lower than year four. But now that I have this book, I'm recognising a lot of the terminology that was in our end of year exam, like placental abruption, placenta accreta. I mean, I don't know what any of them mean, but I think it's going to be really satisfying <laughs> and fulfilling to now be able to answer some of the questions in the progress test that I wasn't able to last year. So in year four, and to be honest with you at Bristol from year one, throughout the whole of the degree so year one two three and four we sit progress tests and what should happen is in year one you don't know any of the answers and then your score just increases over time so my very first progress test i scored 30 percent in year one and my final year exam in year three which allowed me to to pass um into year four i scored 58.3 so i've doubled my mark which is amazing but my mark where it's at right now is not enough to pass fourth year. So that's why hopefully with the additional knowledge that I'm going to be gaining from peds, obs and gynae and psychiatry, that's going to allow me to then hopefully increase my marks by another seven, eight, nine, ten percent this year. And that would enable me to pass finals. So it's a lot of pressure. I know that right now, of course, I'm not where I need to be. Um, but I have until June to to learn all of this new content. So I'm excited. I'm excited to do something new. I'll take you with me for as much as I can. Your friend at the 